One day, an old lady goes to the market to buy plums. How are the plums? Ah, they're all very sweet and delicious. How are the plums? We have all kinds of plums. Sweet, sour, large, small ones, you name it. What kind are you looking for? Give me a bag of your sour plums, please. Would you like anything else? No, I'm all right. How are the plums? What kind of plums are you looking for? Give me a bag of your sour plums, please. Here you go. If you don't mind me asking, everyone else is looking for sweet plums. Why are you looking for sour plums? My daughter-in-law is pregnant. Ah, I see. These days, many pregnant women buy kiwis because they're rich in vitamins. Really? Then I'll take a bag of those as well. Hello, I'm Amy from IGM. Despite all three of the fruit store owners dealing with the same customer, the results were completely different. How could this happen? First, let's take a closer look at the first store, which was unable to make a sale. This store owner ignored what the customer wanted and simply promoted their product by saying, our plums are sweet. The second fruit store owner was able to sell a bag of plums upon learning that the consumer was looking for sour plums. And what about the third fruit store owner? This owner listened to the customer's needs and went one step further to discover the reason behind their needs. As a result, this owner was also able to sell the old woman kiwis. The first and second fruit store owners are the average salespeople we commonly come into contact with, whereas the third owner is different. This type of salesperson is called a consultant type salesperson. So what does this mean? A consultant is a counselor who listens to the problems of a client and offers viable solutions to those problems. From this definition, we can infer that a consultant-like salesperson is a salesperson that determines the hidden needs of a consumer and offers a product or service to fit those needs. By satisfying what a consumer really wants, these types of salespeople instill consumers with the idea, I have to buy this. Uno Takashi is known as Japan's god of business. He began with a tiny izakaya, a Japanese-style bar, and was so successful that he established the Raku Corporation. Currently, this company operates over 20 small franchise bars in the Tokyo area and records over 1.6 billion yen in yearly sales. It is an amazing achievement for a restaurant or bar to achieve close to 15.7 million U.S. dollars in sales. The Nikkei restaurant, a magazine for the Japanese food industry, named Uno Takashi as the god of izakayas, beating out many CEOs of larger franchises. So what was the secret to his success? Uno Takashi thought about how to give the consumers what they wanted to make them happy. Why do people go to izakayas? Most people would answer, to drink, obviously. However, Uno Takashi wasn't satisfied with that answer. He wanted to know what people wanted from an izakaya instead of a fancy wine bar. The answer was the opportunity to communicate with others freely. The people visiting izakayas wanted multiple experiences to enjoy the company of their friends, of other customers, and with the employees. In order to satisfy this hidden consumer need, Uno Takashi had all of the employees and patrons refer to each other by their names. Calling people by their names creates a natural sense of familiarity. Thus, all of the employees wear name tags, allowing customers to refer to all of the employees by name. This led to consumers naturally giving out their names and allowed employees to refer to each customer accordingly. By doing this, any returning customer was greeted in a friendly manner with, Welcome back, John. What do you think the results were? Despite the severe economic recession at that time, sales went through the roof. So what do you think? Actually, Uno Takashi is not the type of salesperson most of us would normally think of. However, he understood what it took to become a successful salesperson. 
He understood that a consumer's hidden needs must be found and that an appropriate service must be offered accordingly. So what must we do to properly use these methods like Uno Takashi did? World-renowned sales consulting experts recommend asking open-ended questions. An open-ended question is a question where the person responding offers their opinions as their answer. It is the complete opposite of a close-ended question, where short yes or no answers are given. Shall we look at an example? Imagine a customer who demands that payment dates be set for the last day of every month before signing a contract. However, you want the payment date to be at the beginning of every month. In this case, if you had said, does the payment date have to be at the end of the month? The customer would simply reply, yes, of course. Now imagine you asked, would you face any specific difficulties if the payment date was not at the end of the month? The customer would then proceed to explain the current situation that they are in and the various difficulties they are facing. This would not only allow both sides to compromise with each other, but also solve the problems and concerns of a new customer to create opportunities for more sales in the future. When a Hyundai Motors salesperson, who was awarded as the top salesperson nationwide for four consecutive years, was asked, what is his secret? He responded by saying, I ask a lot of questions. Truly effective salespeople ask their customers questions. Then they ask more questions. Become a consultant type salesperson by asking open-ended questions to your customers, discovering their hidden needs to provide solutions for them. Teach this lesson to the salespeople in your company and turn them into consultant type salespeople who not only sell plums, but kiwis as well. Thank you.